so good morning Greece there we go again today we will have a little contest between our three types of solar oven and see how they do the first contestant is our old style very very well serving box type Etong solar oven our second contestant is Sterlina one, the old type with the old base and the old food runner still inside. Now this Solina I think is just gonna go for temperature and is not gonna cook anything. Whereas in our Ethong box, we will try to make a bread. Now and then we have the somewhat newer style Solina 1 with a new base and the new food runner, which is all a little bit more sophisticated than the old style. Looks like this. And we will try to make a nice 2 kilo chicken with potatoes in this one. This baby, for anybody who is interested, is really just a fixed installation made from Etong some two, three years ago. Has a little bit suffered and uh, has basically just a double glazed lid from wood which can be lifted easily with these hinges. And then there is inside a second lining from thermal insulation with rock wool and inside this I've made a black insert from aluminium metal which is a nice box which is the actual oven this is our Selena 1 ready now this is the old model and uh, it's gonna run only on ballast as a control unit it will actually not cook anything but the main reason for this is that we don't have so much food and we don't need it. Now this one still has the, the old base, which is a little bit cumbersome, and the old food runner, which is quite nice, works very well, but it's a bit heavy and we will definitely replace it. So the two mirrors are installed, but I can take this one off just to see the base a little bit better again. And uh, we just have to close the lids for this one. And then it should be ready to roll and tell us the temperature that we can achieve today without actually wasting any energy on cooking. Our final contestant. That's the somewhat more modern version of the Solina with the new base, which actually gives us more stability. It's lighter, more flexible, just a slight improvement, not quite so heavy. And the new food runner, which has the ballast already as the food tray and some more sophisticated wheels, which makes it again a little bit more light and looks better. So this unit is now ready for action but because the two units are taking light from each other I will place it somewhere else and then we'll see how it goes. Now here comes the first thing that uh, is very important. The Etong oven of course points always due south and uh, cannot be adjusted but now that the sun is up a little bit it becomes more apparent what the main difference is to the Solina type oven. Now, as you can see, with this gap there, the sun is shining through it onto this little ring on the back and we see that we can easily align the Solina by first turning the entire body of it to a point that this is all in shadow and now you see the little groove here and you see the light and now we basically can turn the Solina to be perfectly aligned with this, but this is 
where you will see the difference between the newer Solina with the new base, and that is that with this one here, this mirror at the bottom is preventing it from turning any further down, whereas with the new one that has the new base, it is far more easy to simply turn this and then turn it up to the right position about here. And now this Solina, much earlier than the other one, is perfectly aligned. It is now 20 minutes to 12. The food has been prepared. The uh, potatoes have been peeled and chopped into small pieces. The chicken has been put with the potatoes in a nice roasting bag and properly sealed. Now this seal is very important because the air inside will expand and then it's just going to cook in its own juices. And also usually when you cook with a solar cooker, very, very often the things you put inside, they dry out, like potatoes or any vegetables or stuff. But this is not going to happen with these guys because they're in a nice sealed container. Now the bread has been mixed for almost an hour and had been time to set a little bit and rise. And uh, it's in a square tin because I have misplaced the other one. Uh, but at the same time, I hope that this square tin is going to allow more air to evaporate and dry it out quicker than a normal tin would. So it's a first for me. We'll see what happens. The solar ovens are all pretty ready for some time now. I could have put it in much earlier. The food's been in now for just 10 minutes. But one effect I wanted to show you is that the temperature here has gone down, of course, by about 15 degrees. Because, of course, we have been opening the lid and put something in, which is the bread. Whereas here it has stayed the same. And on this Solina, with our frozen chicken, of course the temperature has dropped as well. But because we have the ballast inside, the actual drop is pretty small. If there was no ballast inside and there are clouds or you put frozen things in or you open the lids, then of course the temperature will drop very, very quickly and need quite some time to get back to normal. The food is now two hours in there. The bag is still not really uh, blown up or expanded with hot air, so apparently the chicken still is pretty cold and preventing it from uh, starting to cook. But the temperature is a nice 110 degrees, whereas in the control oven the temperature at the moment is uh, 130 degrees centigrade. And uh, the Itong oven should slowly start to be past its best because it can't be aligned to the sun. So it is still at 120 degrees. And it's now just uh, gone 4 o'clock and we have a nice cloud cover. So I've taken the bread out of the Itong solar oven. Looks quite okay, but uh, I will let it cool down a little bit and then open it up and see how it, how it has come out. And this nice one cloud is just sitting above us and all around the sky is well, almost clear. But exactly where we need the sun there is none. Okay, now it's five o'clock and uh, the clouds have somewhat disappeared and we are trying to get this baby up and running again because it's not ready. And while we are waiting, uh, I'm not a smoker, but I have this little gadget here, which is uh, maybe interesting for smokers. 
because it kind of looks the same, works the same, uh, and does this little trick with a cigarette, which you can hopefully very quickly put in here, and then you align it with the sun, like that, and if you're lucky, it should actually ignite. If you're lucky, that is. And if you have the practice. But there's some smoke coming out, so it's definitely working. But as you can see, you can spend a lot of time doing this. So this means you won't get bored waiting for your food. So it's quarter to six now and I think we won't get any more sun today so I will take this out now and you will see the result in a bit. Okay, so this is it. The chicken is out and I think I might have underestimated the power of the sun and it looks well done, well ready. We'll try it. The bread, however, didn't really live up to its standard. Somehow I made it too moist and it didn't rise. Now, two lessons learned out of this disaster is that A, defrost the chicken before you put to the oven and B, if you can put it in two hours earlier, do so. And so there are three plates and the whole thing just came apart like nothing. I think it's going to be so soft we might not even have to chew. About 45 minutes later and uh, this is all that is left from the chicken and of course some obligatory uns when you are in the wild countryside. The bread as I said before didn't really turn out the way I wanted but I think after all it was uh, quite a nice cooking experience in case anybody wonders why I did let uh, the chicken in so long. The reason is that usually the water in it uh, makes a lot of nice bubbles and I was waiting for these bubbles and thought the food wouldn't be ready without bubbles. So sorry about this guys, I'm sure we could have eaten much much earlier and made this video maybe quite a bit shorter. But with a nice little view around our garden and the countryside in Greece, over and out.